Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be a quick version and this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining. Please subscribe to the channel and share this channel with your community. Like I said earlier, this is going to be a quick version. So if you prefer the full length, non time lapsed version, check out my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy website. If you want to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please do. It all helps. And for more in-depth courses, check out paintwithlovejoy.com. And as always, share this with your All right, community. guys. It's going to be another fun painting, a full moon with a cherry blossom. So grab your supplies. Make sure you take your progress photo. And today's painting is going to be the quick time-lapse version. If you would like the full version, check out my Patreon page or the Paint with Lovejoy website. All right, so we're going to start with the background. And as always, you're more than welcome to switch out colors and do not paint as fast as the video. So we're starting with a medium blue that's equal parts white and blue. And we're going to start at the bottom of the canvas. And then we're going to work our way up a little bit darker using blue and then blue and purple and then just purple as we fill up the whole background. And in between each of the steps, the background and then the next step, I am going to recommend that you fully let your painting dry before we put the next step on top of that. So here you can see that I switched into using the direct blue paint. I am using student grade paint. So if you apply it a little bit thicker, it makes for a little bit better coverage and you can add a touch of water to your paint to make it a little bit more fluid. Please just make sure that your uh, paintbrush is not dripping wet with water. And I am painting on watercolor paper here. That's why I have the tape on the edges, but you could do this video with on watercolor paper, canvas pads, uh, stretched canvas, or even canvas panels. So now we're moving into the blue and purple mixture. Your call, how much blue, how much purple, and then we'll be moving into just the kind of the direct purple at the top of the canvas. Now, if you are on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry your colors around the edges. It just looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around. If you're a beginner painter and you are holding your breath, take a big inhale, relax, Again, just a reminder, pause the video as often as you need to, and do not try to keep pace with the video. This is a time-lapsed version. So here we're gonna do stars. We got some really watery white, and then we're using another brush to kind of tap against to create these star droplets. Do make sure that you're doing this on top of a tablecloth or outside in the grass, um, or something that you don't mind a little bit of paint splatter getting on. You do want to make sure that your white paint is runny so you can mix some water with that. And then before you move into the next step, let your painting fully dry. And we're going to be using an item to create a circle for our full moon. I'm actually using one of the plates, but if you're on a smaller canvas, feel free to move down to something smaller like using a cup or the painter's tape that I was holding up a moment ago. And we're basically just going to use the white paint, go around the perimeter of the plate to create our circle, and then we're going to fill it in with white paint. Then we will again let it dry and then add our cherry blossom and silhouette design on top of it. Now I'm being very generous with the white paint so that way we have full coverage, opaque coverage. If you happen to have transparent paint, you might have to actually do your moon coverage two or three layers on there to get opaque coverage. So again, go at your own pace based on the tools that you have. Pause this video as often as you need to and adjust for what you are using or where your learning curve happens to be. And if you need to, if your moon starts to get a little bit bigger as you are cleaning up the edges, embrace that. If your moon starts to go off the edge of the page, again, embrace that and don't stress out about this being a perfect circle. Perfection literally is just an illusion because nothing in life really is perfect. And each one of us has a different concept and idea of what perfect actually is. So again, just embrace and have fun with your creative painting time. This is a good spot to pause that video. Let this fully dry. Then you're going to be moving into black for the silhouette cliff and the cherry blossom tree. Again, pause this as much as you need to, and you are more than welcome to switch out colors. So we've kind of just got a, like a weird potato chip looking edge for the cliff. And then when we move into the cherry blossom tree, exactly how a tree grows, we're going to start with the trunk, 
Then we're going to add some branches and some smaller branches. And then there'll be a point where I kind of pause for a moment and then I decide that I want my tree to be a little bit bigger. So even as you're applying your tree, um, if you decide to maybe change it later, embrace that. It is okay to make adjustments in your painting process. As you're making these lines, if you're starting to get kind of shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that will help give you a steadier brush stroke. You're also gonna wanna kind of look into maybe resting your forearm against the edge of the table or putting your pinky out to kind of help steady your hand as you're making some of these smaller lines. And to make the smaller lines, I want you to use light pressure with your brush. That will create those smaller lines. A little more pressure is gonna create a bit wider brush. You can switch brushes if you need to move down to an even smaller brush or maybe even a bigger one. Rotate the canvas if you need to to make your application a little bit easier. And here's that part where I said I was gonna pause and then I realized, you know what? I need the tree to be a little bit bigger. So I go back and grab the black paint again and make my tree bigger. So again, it is okay to or change your plan in the middle of painting. You know, sometimes you don't know what it's gonna look like until it's on there and then you go, you know what? I wanna go a little bit bigger. Totally okay to do that. Same with even mixing your colors. If you mix a color and then you put it on the canvas, you go, you know what? I need it a little darker or lighter. It's okay to adjust. This is just paint. This is not the end of the world. This is your time to do something creative and not be stressed out about some of the logical things that you may have going in your life or your job or other drama. <laughs> so again, fully let this dry, pause that video, take a progress photo, and let your paint fully dry before you move on to do the foliage. Here we're using a light pink and that medium flat brush, and I'm gonna be using kind of a tapping method and here I decided I did want to go a little bit darker, but kind of using this tapping method to create the foliage. And what I'm doing is holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas, tapping the end of the bristles on there, pulling the brush right back, and then tapping again. And as I pull the brush back, I do twirl it a few millimeters in my finger, so that way I'm slightly changing the shape of the mark that it's gonna make. And this gives me a bit more of an organic approach instead of a repetitive mark making. So if you are looking at your tree and you're like, God, all those leaves look exactly the same, that means you're not kind of moving your brush and you're making the same mark over and over. So hit the canvas with the brush, pull your brush back, twirl two millimeters, and then touch the canvas to the, touch the brush to the canvas again. And then here, I do notice that I did go over the edges of the moon, so that way it's on the background a little bit. That adds a little bit more um, drama and intrigue to your canvas, to your composition. And now we're going in with a darker pink, kind of a medium pink, and we're gonna be adding more to this area. And it is kind of nice to take that progress photo before you add your second um, color into your foliage. And then we're gonna do the same thing with white and add some highlights on here. And this is one of the ways that we create depth in our painting by having three values, a dark shade, a medium shade, and a light shade. And the more that you get into painting, hopefully the more you will be exploring that concept. Here, we're doing it with the white now. Again, just kind of being rather generous with the amount of white paint, tapping in a few areas, and then uh, moving on to the next section. We're gonna put a few little highlights on the cliff Again, just kind of mimic what you see, trust your instincts, and I'm really proud of you guys for taking time out of your day to paint and get creative. Please do not wait too long to do your next one, and until then, cheers. Yeah.